Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Team Venom Wrestling Podcast. I'm uh, Rory, and I'm joined by Connor. I'm not saying I'm hosting because I'm not anymore. We just do it between us, and it's wonderful. So, uh, true. This, it's very true. I think this is the fourth episode we've had come out this year. The first one that we're going to be keeping <laughs> on YouTube video wise. And uh, yeah, this one's going to be focused on WWE Fastlane, all the results, what we thought of each match, and uh, where we think we're going to go from here for WrestleMania. So. Yeah, Connor. Overall, your thoughts on Fastlane? Uh, it wasn't too bad. It was there was some enjoyable matches on there. Um, kind of, I kind of feel like Riddle and Mustafa Ali shouldn't have been on the pre-show. Probably swap that around, have Strowman and Elias. But I suppose Riddle and Mustafa Ali has the least story going into it. Yeah, plus it's since come out that Riddle's been working injured since December or something. So apparently they were going to try and hold off on this until on the uh, retribution explosion until Mania, and then they've just gone fuck it, fast lane pre-show. Don't worry about it. Also, kind of hit Riddle. I hit Riddle's gimmick now. Yeah, because he's he's gone from just being the obvious stoner to like over the top, like. 80s sitcom starter. A Cheech and Chong style, yeah. Yeah. You drink it. Why are you drinking the shittiest lemon like Lucas said? Zero pink. It's the shittiest one. Yeah, I know. That's all they had in the shop. I'd rather have nothing. It was thirsty. It was a thirsty Rory. <laughs> but, um. I was going to say, yeah, so the, the riddle thing, you know, I, I was saying the other week when we were on about Mania and stuff and how there's no direction for the US title as such and no one knows what's happening with Goldberg if he's there. I actually sort of want to see Goldberg squashing for that belt. Well, squash and, riddle. Yeah. <laughs> no. Just squash that character out of it. And then he just comes back a few months later and he's like, okay. If he comes back all serious, <laughs> that would be fine. Yeah, that's what I mean. But, just, yeah, just to give but, it a bit of a reality uh, check. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you took things but, seriously, you were on top of the fucking world. And then when you just became a caricature of yourself, you just got shit up, didn't you, mate? <laughs> if that's that was the case, and he came back and we got like NXT Riddle, mm. I'd be okay with that. Um, otherwise, not so much, but mostly because of that. I, I want to see Goldberg on my TV screen as little as possible. Other than, other than that, I don't really know if he's working injured. They're not gonna, they're not gonna strip him of it. They'll probably make him drop it at Mania. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't, th- I, I can't. If since now they're doing the retribution breakup, we're probably gonna get. Ali versus whichever one. Um, no, no, I mean, it's Ali that's working injured. Oh, Ali working injured. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. well, He's needed surgery since December, apparently, and just been putting it off. Yeah. Hopefully, we get people actually not being injured. Named stupid. <laughs> no, but like, hopefully, this means that we actually get like Dajakovic, not Tiba. Yeah. Or Shane Thorne. Not that he did much once. What's his face left? But still, Shane Thorne, not Slapjack. Mia Yim, not reckoning. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what they do with him if they if they call them back up to if they stay on Raw or if they go back to NXT. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I won't be surprised if someone like Shane Thorne gets thrown to a five live. Yeah. Probably probably the best place for him. I can't see him being booked well anywhere else at the minute. Dion Madden. Maybe put him on uh, back on commentary, or yeah. if if they're actually maybe actually push him. There was a point where but, it looked like they were going to, you know, when they had him like confront Brock Lesnar and everything, and then get taken off commentary that way. You're like, yeah, and then they have some <laughs> Bane mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as long as something happens with those guys, and they don't keep the stupid retribution names, that's fine. Um. I suppose we should mention, because this is actually the first podcast since Andrade has officially been released from WWE. That's true, yes. 
and with, uh, without a no compete clause. And there's AEW this time. evening at time of recording, so we're half expecting to turn up on that. <laughs> yes, because he can, which yeah. would be interesting. Um, but yeah, Riddle beat Mustafa Ali in nine minutes for the to retain the US title. It is what it is. It was the pre-show. It was an okay match at best. But at least they got a little bit of time. And it's longer than some of the uh, Mania matches we were reviewing for the WrestleMania recap podcast that we do. Currently trending on iTunes and uh, all that shit. <laughs> but like, Which is mental because we've only just got to the Manias we actually give a shit about. Yes, that is true. And yet we're somehow in um, the top wrestling podcast category on iTunes. And it's that wrestling, WrestleMania recap. So, well done us. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> you guys are wild and we don't... A win's a win, isn't it? <laughs> you know I mean? It is. It is. <laughs> to be honest, if anything, once they get to the newer ones... Uh, oh, it's okay. going to drop oh. off because our format's changed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll probably start getting better because it goes from us being like, blah, 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 blah. Thanks for listening. Goodbye to... these. Are, this was the matches. Right. Do you remember this one and why it was shit? Uh, yes. And then 20 minutes of calling Hogan a racist. But he can't be racist. He's a, he's going to be a horse with Best friend's Titus O'Neil, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. King of them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, you know, Hogan's doing the age old thing. I say it all the time, you know. I'm not racist. My girlfriend has two black eyes. It's all voluntary and makes sense. Um, up next, Nia Jax. Paul Hogan Jen said Desler. that he wasn't racist because his daughter banged a black person. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty that, sure that was the whole thing where I, guess, it got I, think, I, might have, I think I think that might have lit the match. <laughs> um, Nia Jax and Shenda Baszler with Big Dick Reggie um, defended the women's tag team titles against Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. Oh, yeah, I should say we actually have predictions here. We're both right about Riddle. Uh, yeah, All three we, of us were right about Riddle. Did we get everything um, right about every match? Yes, we'll get onto the, the the one difference, but I'll also will I'll also explain yeah. To be fair, at that point, I didn't want why. That. <laughs> for, for the predictions, no spo Well, spoiler, but not spoiler. Rory technically won because he said Alexa. However, due to the the way the way it happened and that it shouldn't have happened because it wasn't the it whole was fucking just, thing shouldn't have happened. To be fair, it shouldn't have. But at least we, we know there was a story behind it. Um. Yeah. We'll get to that and I'll explain it there. All four of us went for Naya and Shayna and they did win. Obviously, as I said in the predictions, it would have been pointless for Bianca and Sasha to win it because they'd have to drop it within the next like three shows. Um, and the, the flip flop, like the women's tag team titles are already kind of looked down upon in general at the minute. They and were within like a month of, of coming yeah, out, to be fair. And, and, I, and I think uh, flip flopping them for the sake of no reason really would have been. Uh, pointless. Not again. This match wasn't really stand out. No. It was your stereo it was your stereotypical challenger and champion teaming up and miscommunicating, etc. Lim Banks slapping the taste out of Belair at the end of the match. Yeah, because you have to establish one of them as the heel, and you know, a rule that's going to come into play on later card, later matches in this card. So yes, yeah. Uh, move on. Big E defeated Apollo. Which again, we all said. Um, yep. Apollo, I liked how it uh, as well. Yeah, I'm still very. I, I, the the sudden Nigerian accent, which I'm pretty sure he didn't have like two rolls ago, is. Nice. Uh, it's going to take time to get used to. Um, I was waiting for you to give us like an upside to that. <laughs> Just, we'll get nope. used to it eventually. It's going to be like when all of a sudden, you know, remember when Kofi Kingston forgot it was Jamaican? And then they it just, was just pointed out together. straight away by, by Shaw's like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it was Triple H, hold on a minute. I got a question. Aren't you supposed to be Jamaican? <laughs> but if this is going to be a long term gimmick, that's fine. We'll get used to it. Yeah. Um, Big E just beating the shit out of Apollo for like three and a half minutes for then Apollo to semi come back for two minutes and then a uh, cheeky roll up reversal. Uh, a lot of people saying that they botched the finish. They did not botch the finish. No, no. If anything, it gave this is the reason for it to be a mania match. Yeah. This is your cliche thing of even though Biggie got the win over Apollo, Apollo can still claim it's a tainted win. 
So what yeah. looks like Apollo will take the title from Big E at uh, Mania. It's what it's looking like for me at the minute. Um, Which, to be fair, I'm, Apollo, I'm all for if it moves yeah. Big E onto the universal title picture. Yeah, Apollo then gets his big win at Mania and he can be like, I finally beat Big E and I beat him clean. You rolled me up, blah, blah, blah. All that shit. So we're all still tied. Um, it, again, five minutes of Big E just dropping his tits on Apollo. It was decent. Yeah. Uh, very nice spear, though. Yeah, very nice spear. Very Big nice e spear very, big, big, big E does have a nice spear. Yeah. Unlike Apollo, who literally comes out with a spear. <laughs> I know. But um, <laughs> and we, because um, just for the, for the benefit of the, the viewers and listeners and such, we had a little live, a little group chat going on while Fastlane was taking place, and we were on about about that there, and pointed out that Biggie's for saying that the main event of WrestleMania on the SmackDown side of thing is Spear versus Spear. Edge Biggie has seems the to worst have the spear. One. <laughs> oh, I said it in the group chat and offended fucking diabetic Danny. Oh yeah, Edge and Edge has the worst spear in wrestling. I, I, I swear that's the spear that will give you a concussion or neck injury. <laughs> Do you know what didn't I mean? The way he lands. Didn't, didn't he like? When he speed Brody Clay, isn't that what like completely severed whatever it was that made him have to retire on the spot? See, I, I assumed so. Yeah. It's just it just looks like there's no velocity and he just sort of as soon as there's gonna be actual collision, he he just Yeah, he takes like a knees. spike bump. Yeah. Whereas like you get Goldberg and Biggie, any anyone, even fucking Charlotte Flair, like they'll follow through with the spear. Lashley does that fucking awesome flip thing, doesn't he? So he's yeah, like he clothesline in the rift. Well, his little like, over army roll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Goldberg does like a full on. <laughs> yeah, Goldberg <laughs> doesn't stop. <laughs> just runs through him. <laughs> Goldberg's literally like, you're going to be here. I'm going to come this way. I suggest you jump backwards because I'm still going to do this regardless. And even if you don't jump backwards, it's still going to look fucking great. <laughs> William Reed. <laughs> A Christian who jumps too early and just gets fucking killed. <laughs> uh, then we moved on to Braun defeating Elias. Not Shane. We didn't have a prediction for this, but it's not like we'd fucking. It wasn't officially it was. announced. It's not like they're taking it off the match card. Yeah, they? and even if even if it was, we'd have all said Braun anyway. Braun beat Elias <laughs> with uh, Jackson Riker, who hilariously still on television which is fine i like gunner but the whole trump thing that it, it's funny it's funny to me three minutes 50 seconds uh, um still kind of makes me feel sick that the whole precipice for Strowman versus shin which has now been announced for many if, if i remember rightly yes all all started because shin mcmahon decided it was children's television and fucking slimed braun Strowman. I've been calling him stupid for a few weeks and doing all stupid things like going did you see the one where uh, Braun chased him uh, and they did the fucking train effect oh no that, that yeah that was that was raw this week that was fucking terrible but uh, there was one where Braun was chasing Shane Shane ran into a parking lot Shane's limo zoomed off and Braun was like ah oh, he's gone and walked off and then Shane just appeared and kind of went huh, see stupid like no, that's not stupid if you've seen your limo leaving and you've ran that way and you've got a history of doing this. That's not stupidity. That's a completely logical step to make, a logical conclusion to draw. Like, oh, Shane's a coward. He's just fucked off in his car. Do you know what I mean? I mean, if anything, do that again, but just hammer home the stupid. And instead of him like hiding properly and then coming out, <laughs> we stood there with a fake mustache. <laughs> no, no, literally, have Strom and go up, and the, li the limo takes off. And then you've just got Shane McMahon stood behind like a metal pole. Just, just stood there with loads of random merchandise and just like this look. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should definitely so yeah, do that. That, <laughs> that shit's happening purely so Jim McMahon can try and do a big elbow or some kind of stage thing. Or because he wants um, to host the next Nickelodeon Kids Awards, hence the green slime shit. Sure. Which is, uh, this is where the, mean, the Cena did it. <laughs> it's yeah, an but, actual thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, but that makes sense because Cena is like ninety percent of the people who buy John Cena merch are that age anyway. Yeah, that's true. 
So he tailored to them. But imagine being a fucking 12-year-old, like, it's time for the Nickelodeon Awards. Whoa, and your host, Whoa, a wrestler. Whoa, Shane McMahon. What? What? <laughs> Dad, who's this? Uh-huh. I don't know. <laughs> some, some, um, some privileged dick. <laughs> yeah. uh, Seth Rollins versus Nakamura. Best match on the card, in my opinion. Yeah. To be fair, we were saying that on the preview, and yeah, fair play, it was. The main event was great uh, as well, to be fair, but yeah. I think this one just beat it out because it was fresh. Yeah. Um, very good match between the two. Seth Rollins won, which we all predicted again. Yep. Shock. Um, definitely is leading for Seth Cesaro at Mania. Yeah. Which was great. I think we're going to get the build for that in like two days' time when when SmackDown rolls along. So fully expecting Cesaro to issue the challenge or Seth, I, I don't know. But it, it's all going to kick off on SmackDown, isn't it, this week? It's got to, really. What's so. Nakamura going to do at Mania? Uh, see, they might go the route of having, because Buddy Murphy's been getting back, trying to get back in with Seth recently, hasn't he? We might go the route of having Seth and Buddy versus Cesaro and Nakamura. No, I think I think Which they're going to have Cesaro be... and Seth that do a one-on-one. Yeah, the I only thing the I one-on-one. Can think in Nak- Nakamura is that if they do the Battle Royale again. Yeah, and give him the win for it. Yeah. To be fair, he'd be a very strong candidate to win the uh, Andre Memorial Rumble. So, considering yeah. like who won the last one, was it Mojo? Or was it Matt Hardy? Oh, Matt Hardy won one, didn't he? Yeah, um, Cesaro's won one, Big Show won one, Mojo. Oh, didn't Braun win the last one? And he was all stood like without no shirt, like, <laughs> like yes. that at the end of it. <laughs> okay, so it was Cesaro, Big Show, Baron Corbin, really. Really? Roger Rolling, yeah. WrestleMania 32. Ah, because the Matt Hardy That's... one was when they had the Delete as a Worlds thing because Bray returned at the Battle Royale, didn't he? Off, yeah. Um, yeah, so Cesaro, Big Show, Baron Mojo, Matt Hardy, Braun Strowman was the last one. Aha! WrestleMania 37, it's official. We are having the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. Have they actually announced it? Nice. It says here, it's on the list, April 10th slash 11th, 2021. Ah, cool. Down with that. So unless they're lying to us, which is always a possibility. Oh, yeah. I forgot that in the uh, WrestleMania 32 one, Tatanka was there. Yeah, just randomly there, wasn't he, as as well? There's no real... Yeah, no one said anything about it. No, they didn't have any individual entrances either. They all just came out, didn't they? Yeah, he was just in there. Did I just say fucking Tatanka? <laughs> yeah, and I think when I noticed it, because I think at that point I was doing something while the battle royale was on texting or something, and then yeah. all I heard was, and Tatanka's eliminated. What? How is this the first mention? Do you remember when Braun Strowman was feuding with those two guys from um, Saturday Night Live? Yeah, that was... Um, that was the one he won, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the last one, because the runner-up to that was Colin Jost. Yeah, and I... Well, um, I just had no interest in in that build to Braun versus Saturday Night Live because it, it just wasn't it wasn't anything that I was bothered by, and didn't even realise those two were in that battle royal until until it came oh, down yeah. to Braun and one of them like the yeah. fuck did he come from? <laughs> well, I don't really like much celebrity involvement, which is why I, like the Bad Bunny thing is just going to be dull for me. It's probably that will probably be my piss brick. Yeah, to be fair, that would be the point. <laughs> it's like when more and go what yeah. just happened. <laughs> well, it's like it's like when Mojo won, isn't it? Because of Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Because Jinder Mahal can survive RKO's, but not a shoulder tackle from Gronk. Yeah, longest reigning twenty four seven champion and all that shit. Do you know yeah. he's got his own action figure out now? You can buy a Gronk um, elite figure with the twenty four seven title. Fuck off. It's in the same series as that carrying cross one. I think all of the series before might even be the series before. Oh my god! Have you just seen a picture of it in his beautiful Degla shirt? For the benefit of the uh, people that are only listening to this and not seeing this, Connor is looking very perturbed. That is the worst <laughs> fucking figure ever. <laughs> you know, for the if anyone's watching on YouTube, where are we? Here's the picture of Gronk. This is Rob Gronkowski. This is his official figure, and his face. It's fucking Tyson Kidd. 
you know what it reminds me of, right? Did you ever watch I'm Alan Partridge? Possibly. You know his mate Michael. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what it oh looks like, God, isn't it? <laughs> it's, that's... The, I, I hate wrestling. <laughs> I hate wrestling. Um, <laughs> fast lane, anywhere. Yeah. Seth beat Shinsuke is a very good match. Um, yep. Seth Cesaro penciled in practically, I think. Nakamura maybe for the Battle Royal, unless we get some kind of surprise matchup, um, or if he's in like a multi-man title match, like US or in the or whatever the case is. I'm assuming it'd be US at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'd be fine with that. We then got Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. No holds barred. 19 minutes 40 seconds. And quite frankly, I was incredibly bored through this one. Um, yeah, I agree. To be fair, I mean, uh, I don't know. know it, I did. It, it, yeah, <laughs> you know what I did. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't feel like a normal big guy versus big guy, hoss versus hoss showdown. I don't know what it was. Like, don't get me wrong, I wasn't expecting Pete Dunne versus Tyler Bate level of energy. Yeah, but it just everything felt very slow. And then when it came to the finish, uh, I it felt really rushed. I don't know. It, yeah. The finish itself, like the the events leading up to it, the little build, excuse me, uh, just seemed really rushed, and I wasn't, I wasn't hugely into it. Well, I, I think, uh, I think, it, I, I think I'm over Drew McIntyre as a main eventer at the minute. Yeah, I think. To be fair, I think Drew, and especially because uh, he came out looking like Mel Gibson. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm by that. that as he slapped I'm, it. Yeah. <laughs> and by that, I mean, yeah. and by looking like Mel Gibson, I mean, he had the Braveheart, Braveheart looking face, yeah, yeah. Braveheart face pain, didn't look come out looking like he hated Jews. No. Um, thankfully, well, it would have been great uh, if he'd have won by showing his yeah. arse to Seamus. <laughs> Just recre recreates that scene from Braveheart. Get a look at this, laddie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen it, mate. <laughs> I feel like Seamus needs a gear change. Yeah. Purely, purely to fit his like new gypsy snatch kind of person out of the ring. Yeah, because to be fair, I don't mean like. I yeah. quite enjoyed his character. No. I like his character, but I just feel I don't mean fighting the vest top and like trousers to look full, you know, stereotypical Irish gypsy. But at least change the design of the trunks or something. Yeah, because he—I mean—he's he's returned uh, over the last couple of years. We've seen him return to his Celtic warrior thing, which contradicts his out, out of the ring persona. I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah, I agree. So, but um, right. for the benefit of the listeners and the viewers, I was half an hour late to the fast lane party because of the earlier start time. Which, to be fair, WWE, if you're paying attention to this. Um, they don't like us. They're not. Paying attention. Yeah, I know. But they might. They might. We've we've had slaps on the wrists from WWE in the past, saying that we're too negative on their product. So no, 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 no. <laughs> don't put shit product on TV. Then. I know. So I'm hoping we're liking it just, now. Like, tune in from time but, to time, just to just yeah. to see. <laughs> but we're quite enjoying it. We're quite positive on their stuff this year, to be fair. And that's and that's not like the yeah, yeah. I mean, we're actually enjoying no, their stuff for once that's true. yeah that is true I mean Raw still needs to be two hours but other than that yeah. as a whole it's not too Smackdown. bad Smackdown is the best regular TV show like, NXT is better don't don't uh, be that guy no don't, don't be that guy NXT <laughs> is miles better above above Raw and Smackdown so NXT is the better wrestling show Smackdown is the better sports entertainment show don't call that <laughs> Don't cause that argument because I'll just, I'll dick slap you, don't. <laughs> anyway, so I was half an hour late because it started at 11 o'clock over here instead of the usual midnight or 1 a.m. thing. And um, it got to the Drew Seamus thing and it was just, I couldn't get into watching it. And that was the point what, that I used to actually catch up. So by the end of the Drew Seamus thing, I'd fast forwarded that much through that match that we were all at the same point. <laughs> so so uh, it was that's how interested I was. Fast. Thing is, although, I, I do like both of them. Although, I look, yeah. Although the Drew versus Sheamus hype package before the match was very good. Yeah, to be fair, all that, all that stuff showing their the history, I thought was great. So yeah. showing um, like stupid people like that. Yeah, it? don't you think the um, 
the hype package for that match felt very mania hype package level. Yes. But we were saying months back that we thought that they were going to... I was saying that I could see them going Drew versus Sheamus at Mania. Yeah, for the title. So it's like they've sort of gone, actually, yeah, we're going in a different direction. But we'll still let this have the payoff. Yeah, and here's the here's the video. As soon as they were, was 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 been, back in yeah, because <laughs> yeah. as soon as they got Pally Pally again, I think everybody knew that they were going to face at some point. So it makes sense. At least they didn't waste, you know, the the booking or whatever. Yeah. Uh, right, moving on now uh, to oh, we all said Drew by the way. Shot. Yeah. Moving on, Alexa Seth. versus Randy. <laughs> we did. Moving on to Alexa versus Randy Orton. Alexa beat Orton. Me and Danny said Orton. You said Alexa. However, we are revoking your technical win. Purely that this was only booked and announced as an intergender match, not a no disqualification match. Yeah, to be uh, fair, and and I hated it. <laughs> so I didn't yeah. want to win this way. <laughs> I'll, happily, the, the, I'll happily take the loss on this one. I did not want to win the, this way. <laughs> fireballs and stuff. You could say DQ, but they didn't actually set him on fire or anything like that. That if anything, it just seemed illusional because he he was wiping his face, but not really screaming in pain. Yeah. So you could be like, all right, that was like, do you remember the, the magician guy who would just, boom, confetti? I, can't remember I just assumed name. that he'd been like studying up on um, Street Fighter and every time that Alexa Bliss threw a fireball, he went to throw it, throw a tiny one and blocked it by default. And like, what do I got to say? Yeah. Um, yeah, through the I match, doubt. Alexa has been Mrs. Spooky Bitch. She's dropping shit on Randy Orton, like lights and stuff while attempting to blah, blah, blah. Randy Orton said a swear, which he <laughs> probably got a slap on the wrist for, but to be fair, he made that. He made his reaction to it seem very real. Yes, because I think that's how we would all react. <laughs> um, but the reason that we're going to revoke is because, as we say, it was not booked as an ODQ match, and Alexa like pushed Orton or whatever it was, and then the fe- the fiend appeared from the ring, looking like Chad Bacon. Pretty have you seen sure. the film Dogma? Yeah, I have. Have you seen the shit demon that comes out the toilet? Yes, I have. Have you suddenly gone? Are you? Are, you look like you're focused on the screen. Are you trying to find a picture of that shit? Even? <laughs> no, I, I got a pop up saying if I don't press something, my uh, computer is going to re- do a restart and update. Um, oh, but yeah, no, yeah. that shit demon from, from uh, yeah. Yeah. very much um, like this version of Braun. Uh, Bray. Yeah, Bray then did the sister Abigail and Alexa got the pin. Should have been a DQ, hence why we've got the problem. If he hadn't, if they'd have announced there's an no DQ match, it'd have been fine. To be um, fair, I said on the preview thing, I didn't want Alexa to win. I could just see them going that way. I'm fine with Alexa winning, but announce your matches, right? That's all. Um, apparently, as well, rumor has it it was not Bray Wyatt dressed as the Fiend. Oh, okay. Rumor has it that it was Bo Dallas. Bo got big. Uh, <laughs> not for any, not for any storyline purpose, just because it was easier. Fair than fly, flying Bray in, apparently. Could all be bullshit, you never know. Um, but yeah, that was that. Now, main event, Roman Reigns defeated Daniel Bryan in a 30-minute match for the Universal title. Edge apparently turned heel in the most like confusing... It wasn't very clearly defined as a heel turn, was it? It was not, but rumour has it that he is. Yeah, apparently it was a heel turn... And Brian will be being added to the match so that that there's heel heat in there. Because if Edge is heel against Roman, people are still going to cheer him. And I think people yeah. are still going to cheer Roman, to be fair, because Roman's at that level now where he's the cool heel on SmackDown, isn't he, to be fair? Uh, it's like one of those things that, that when Cena was getting booed for being the, the, white, the white meat baby face, everyone was saying, turn him heel, people will start cheering him again. And everything because you want to see like the layers to the character and Roman now that he's been given all that sort of layer is probably the most over thing on SmackDown outside of Daniel Bryan, who is like the hottest yeah. baby face of all time, essentially, based on how you know, yes, movement, all that sort of stuff. So I can see it just being right, we want to turn edge heel, we want to keep Roman heel, we stick Daniel Bryan in there, the pair of them can just beat the fuck out of him. Bryan gets all the sympathy, everyone hates Roman. Everyone hates Edge. Yay! That's what we want. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I want? Now that Edge is heel. Yeah. Randy Orton is also heel. I think Orton's sort oh. of face though now, isn't he, by default? 
Nah. Because he stopped being a dick to everyone else because he's focused on the Fiend. <sighs> and now the yeah, Fiend's but, like trying to murder yeah, him. <laughs> yeah, the Fiend's not a heel, fit, a heel though. I know, but it's like if you were watching the Halloween uh, movies and stuff, you wouldn't say Jason was the good guy. No, but the thing is, I'm not saying the Fiend's a good guy. It's just the Fiend is an attraction. Yeah. So people are happy to see him. So it doesn't matter who he faces, whether the person there is the biggest face in the company or the heel, the people are going to be behind the Fiend. Yeah. It was a, it was the same when Taker retired from full time and appeared just before Mania to challenge someone. Yeah. It doesn't matter who it was going to be against. People were always behind Taker. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same thing. What I want, since we get both of those as heels, a few months after Mania, have all because I'll have Orton lose the Fiend at Mania. Yeah. On this space for a little bit, for like two months or something. And then all of a sudden, NWA music. And we have Heel Cena, Heel Orton, Heel Edge, <laughs> new NWA. That's the dream. That is the dream. Wouldn't happen, but it would be amazing. <laughs> it wouldn't happen, but just have those guys just be absolute twats to everyone. Yeah. Or WWE people, buys out the rights to the main event mafia and you just go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> just stop. But playing. not even not even their official theme, just you doing that. <laughs> yeah, just me doing it. Yeah. Sounds better. Just you on the Titan Tron like in the in the on the tuxedo. <laughs> tuxedo with a little, little like, um, pocket yeah, square yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um it was a it was a good match. Um Apparently, it's penciled in that it's going to be a trouble for Emin, you know, yeah. which, fair enough, if it means Roman doesn't take the pin, I guess so they can keep him looking strong for longer. Fair yeah. enough. This is it, because Edge could win the belt, which I think is what it's going I think that's that's the clear resolution to Mania, is Edge is going to walk out champion. I think so, he has to at this point. Yeah. Whereas Roman... We've been saying for ages that we didn't want to see Edge beat Roman. But yeah. we did want to see Edge win the main event. It's like one of those really awkward things. So I think they've just introduced Brian to give people like us a solution of, look, here you go. How's this? <laughs> All right, fair enough. So, yeah. Have you heard, by the way, that NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver, which I hate the name of, is also two nights? Yes. Which is weird. Um... We've got two matches announced. Night one, the match announced is for the NXT Women's title, which I'm assuming will be that night's main event. Yeah. Uh, Ayo Shirai defending against Raquel Gonzalez with Dakota Kai, because, sure. And yeah. of course, Finn Balor versus uh, defending the NXT title against Karrion Cross, uh, which I'm very happy about. As you know, been a big fan of Karrion Cross since AAA and Impact, etc. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unconfirmed night, but apparently the match itself has been um, uh, not confirmed, is John Devlin versus Santos Escobar to yeah, the determine the... Thing. Yeah, the unification Yeah, because yeah, somehow there's... yeah. And I... Because he's been defend Devlin's been defending it on NXT UK. He, and not Escobar's been able to travel, though, has he? No, no. But so I mean, they've still been letting him defend it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So <laughs> to be fair, on, um, Trent Seven didn't he? The yeah, other way? I mean, yeah, they did. I mean, wouldn't the easiest way to, for this to just be resolved without having to like do it? Because just keep Jordan Devlin on NXT UK. I'm just called the yeah, NXT UK Cruiserweight yeah. Championship. Yeah, I know. Literally, so much easier. But this one's purple. This one's black. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, if jo if this means Jordan Devlin gets. This level of match, you know, NXT fucking take over WrestleMania is basically what this is anyway. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm very take over much the okay. Yeah, I'm very much okay with this. Um, oh my god, I've just realised. So that's seventh and eighth, which is night one and night two of Takeover. Yeah. I think get Friday to sleep like a normal human being, and then the tenth and eleventh is Mania. Um, I was thinking about, about this because of how we've been doing the, this um, new format and series for for these shows. We've been sort of doing the previews and reviews of um, wrestling events. Should we do a preview for the Hall of Fame, say, for the next episode of this, and then do the preview review of NXT and preview and review of Ma WrestleMania, do you think? 
feel like for those we'll probably have to wait until it's a full match card practically so we'll yeah that's why to... i'm saying we do the hall of fame one in between uh, yeah i mean we've got like the whole we, we already know who the class of 2020 is and we've got the bulk of 2021's class announced which oh, so far been, is it's been like two people announced molly holly eric bischoff rvd sort of announced and really? virgil <laughs> Yeah, well, Batista's I mean, the... Hall of Fame induction is postponed officially. Batista's, yes. That makes sense, though. It's because it's filming, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen loads of people. I saw a thing from superstar Billy Graham, because he likes to, to rant on social media. <laughs> and he was saying, oh, yeah, if Dave doesn't like the product. He's been very critical of it for years. Like, no, you fucking plum. The other week when there was all this stuff about oh. AEW, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but when there was all this stuff about AEW having this big Hall of Fame worthy signing, loads of people say, oh, it could be Batista, it could be Batista. And he's like, I've literally just arrived in Australia to film either Guardians 3 or 4, Guardians or, 3. or a combination or whatever. But yeah, well, that's not going to be wrapped up in two weeks. It's only been like two and a half weeks since that, since he landed there. I can't see them going, you know what, we'll all stop filming this huge epic Marvel movie just so that Dave can go back to the States for a week and potentially have to quarantine either side of it. And do you know what I mean? I don't know what the travel laws are like over there at the moment, but obviously where we are, it's a mandatory two weeks in isolation yeah. the second you touch down. Because, you know, on certain times and all that. So we know the female person going in is Molly Holly. Yeah. We know Eric Bishop's going in, and apparently RVD might be going in. Yes, that's been like rumoured by loads of random news sites, and Sabu's blatantly been telling people that it's happening. But so, yeah, but Sabu. Um, so that means we're still we still need the headliner, which maybe could be RVD. To be fair, could be RVD. Yeah, I'd be okay with RVD being the headliner. So if we if it is RVD, then okay. But that means we we need. In fact, no, because you have two individuals. I think so this is be... the. I still think this is the year that, that they put Taker in. Yeah, I think Taker is going to be the headline. Um, yeah, so there's still yet. So let's just say, for argument's sake, Taker is headliner. Yeah, that means we've got Taker headliner. Molly Holly is the female uh, entrant in it. The two individual entrances being Eric and RVD. That means we still have a group a warrior award recipient and a legacy. Mm -hmm. Which they don't necessarily have to do a group. It's just that they have done in recent years, haven't they? That just seems to be the thing now. It yeah. does seem to be the thing. Yeah. But which, but if we're just, the thing is that's been the past three hall of fames, obviously not including 2020 because it didn't happen. No, um, I think they would have done. But you got to think the group for 2020 is NWO. Yeah. Which yeah. mean, which means that's been in the past if we include 2020, the past four Hall of Fames has, has had that far. Yeah, yeah. I've read a group or a tag team or whatever, yeah, because we've seen Harlem Heat, Heart Foundation, D-Generation X, X and stuff go in recently. We, we had the Four Horsemen go in a few years back as well. Um, I think that was before they, they actually had like a group. Win. Yeah, no, no. I mean, that was yeah. that was the first one, wasn't it, a few years back. But I'm saying, so, you know, group-wise, who's, who's left? If they hadn't have, obviously they've had the Dudleys in, um, if they hadn't have had the thing of Christian Cage going to AEW, I could have seen them doing Edge and Christian as a tag team mm. to capitalise on Edge and to get Christian in there. Yeah, but obviously that ain't happening now. I think. I think. That means I could have seen Paul White going in this year if he hadn't have gone to AEW. A Warrior Award? Do you reckon? Should be Gaspard. Yeah. This, there is a lot of people online saying it should go to um, John Huber. Yeah. But I'd say... I'd say for the... the I mean, there's no the reason why they can't award. do both. It, it could be that uh, Shad Gaspar gets Warrior and maybe they put John Huber in Legacy. Yeah. But, but I, I hate... This sounds bad because I'm comparing two people who tragically passed away. I know. It's, but for what the Warrior Award is, I would say just going by the manner of which both people passed. Yeah. You'd put you would put it to be Shad Gaspard, being that he obviously yeah. saved his son. Had someone to... coming, yeah. yeah. Rather than John Hugh obviously tragically passed because of I believe it was um something to do with his, his lungs. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, bad to finish on a sad note, but we'll we'll do a Hall of Fame podcast at some point and we'll go more into detail in general of who we would have personally inducted maybe and whatever we decide to do at the time. This has been Fastlane with a absolutely huge um, tangent. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Although, just before we before we sign off, what do you think will be announced for Mania that hasn't been announced already? Okay, let me have a look at so Mania's current announced match card. Announced card. Currently announced right now is yeah. Bobby Lashley versus Drew. Yeah. Uh, by the way, MVP will not be in any kind of title match as he's he's been announced as Lashley's manager. Yep. I know they could still do it, but you know they won't. So night one, so far confirmed, Bobby Lashley versus Drew, Sasha versus Bianca, Bad Bunny with Damien Priest versus The Miz with John Morrison, because that's what we want to see. Uh, night two, Roman versus Edge, Asuka versus Ray Ripley, Fiend versus Orton, and unconfirmed nights being New Day versus AJ and almost, and Braun versus Shane. So with that, I think a non-announced match that's obvious, Seth versus Cesaro. Yeah. Um, they're both women's titles on the line there, yeah. Tag titles, not new, uh, so I'm thinking fatal four way for that. Four way, or maybe a um, a ladder match of some kind, yeah. The yeah. US belt has not been put on here, so maybe we could see the multi man uh, ladder match uh, for the US belt, yeah. Yeah, Hell, that could be why John Morrison's not in a tag match with the Miz, they might be giving him the US title shot. Who knows? Yeah, we could do. Um, Multi man ladder match makes sense when you've they've still got Jeff Hardy on the card and he's not been booked for anything for Mania. Yeah. And it's Do you like, know what would be a nice a nice addition as well? Just yeah. purely because I was I was watching the network the other day and I was watching the old WrestleMania. You know the money in the bank matches used to be on that Mania? Yeah. Carlito always does phenomenal in those kind of matches. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see him in that match again, just because you know we're gonna see like a someone climbing up the ladder and he just hits a backstabber. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Good, good spot. So yeah, I think we're going to get possibly a multi, uh, a multi team or like a ladder level match for the tag titles. Um, possibly, hopefully, well, I think is the right word, a multi man ladder for the US. Apart as it comes to the source that I read earlier, apparently the battle royals are back. Um. I'm trying to think because that's only there's still room for other matches if they wanted to put some on yeah there's two unconfirmed nights so that just makes it if we just share them out that just means right now it's four matches per night yeah um last year had like seth... was it 12 matches or something yeah. last year yeah so let's put seth and cesaro on one night and then let's put the us title whatever that may be Whatever, yeah. the, you know, just that being defended in general on another. Oh, SmackDown so tag five. title. We forgot about SmackDown tag titles. That's going to be a multi team thing. That's what we said, yeah. I'm trying to think. So that would be one match has five, one match has, has six. One night has five, sorry, one night has six. Yeah. Because the SmackDown one's going to be something like Dirty Dogs versus Otis and Gable versus Mysterios versus uh, Street Profits, I reckon. Yeah, I could, yeah. Because um, they're, they're certainly building that way on SmackDown. They had uh, the Mysterios beat um, Street Profits on, on Friday's SmackDown. And then Alpha Academy came out and was like, you're still not getting the shot in front of us, blah, 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 blah. And then Alpha Academy had a match with the Mysterios and beat them. So then all four teams just sort of, just sort of uh, went to town afterwards. So, yeah. Yeah, women's tag titles. Do you reckon those those two are going to be thrown into a battle royal if it is going to happen, or do you think they're going to be a pre-show thing? See, I thought that was going to be. I, was, I could see that being a multi-woman tag match, but then at the same time, I think there's the risk of them running the risk of doing too many multi-man matches and stuff like that. And I don't know, but I think if you could. Put a match in. Yeah. That isn't even remotely. That, is, that isn't here. <laughs> yeah. That you don't maybe don't necessarily need a big build for that you can do it from let's say Friday Friday SmackDown. 
Okay. Of people who obviously aren't on the card and aren't speculated to to be going in in on the card. What would you do? Um. If I could put anything, especially based on people that are, that we know are under contract to WWE, mm-hmm. um, but aren't haven't been on shows and stuff recently, I'd do Triple H Goldberg. <laughs> I don't think Triple H would want that purely because when Triple H is at Mania, he doesn't want to do those level of Goldberg six minute matches. No, but the, if, every if time. Was... Tri- tri- if it was Berg's last yeah. match, you know. as long as he wins by, as long as Goldberg wins by being hit in the head with a sledgehammer when he goes yeah. for that's fine. That'd be great. <laughs> it's like a, you know what, Goldberg Triple H one last time, loser retires. <laughs> like, like Goldberg just gets hit with a sledgehammer and loses by not by Triple H either. Bret Hart comes out and gets him, punks him straight in the head. <laughs> I'd go Kevin Owens and Nakamura. I know it looks like we're going to have mm. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. We forgot about Kevin Owens versus Sami yeah. Zayn as a potential one. Yeah. Yeah. It's just Sami Zayn's like gimmick at the minute. I know the whole point is to be annoying. Like, that's what the whole point of the gimmick. But I just. Stole it. Stole it. Our gimmick. <laughs> yeah. I just, um, I don't know. I feel like Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. I know we've seen it all over the past years and stuff. But I feel like those two can always bring it. And obviously, somebody's gimmick doesn't change their in ring ability. Yeah. But. Sami Zayn can't have the level of Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens matches we've seen while being the gimmick he is. Yeah. Because of how much of like a heel and stuff he's been. Yeah, so no, I'd I agree. rather see Kevin, Kevin Owens and Nakamura, two people where it doesn't matter who gets the win, but they could put on a great match. Yeah. We've also got um, nothing, there's nothing penciled in for Jey Uso. It's going to be He's probably going to be, He's going to be involved in the triple threat match, isn't he? Unless, what if... Daniel Bryan has to beat Jey Uso on night one nah, to go into the nah. triple threat match. <laughs> no, nah, this isn't WrestleMania 30. We're not doing that. Unless, let's say, the four-way SmackDown tag title match is confirmed. Yeah. And then the last show before Mania, um, Otis and Gable, because who cares get attacked and get in, injured can't compete and then it's announced that there's been a replacement it's Jimmy and Jay yeah makes sense to be fair oh they just do what do you remember what they did with the ladder match with the Hardys you could just have Titus and, and Hulk Hogan come out and be like there's one more team who soon starts strolling down Hogan's there like his music's not going off he's making the noise <laughs> yeah <laughs> while there's, while uh, Titus O'Neil still is <laughs> sort of noises that he likes uh, <laughs> <laughs> incidentally that's the noise that Hulk Hogan thinks black people make <laughs> I try- we're keeping it in I don't care it's staying in Hogan's a racist it. he said it <laughs> <laughs> That's why you stopped doing the noise because it you stopped. It didn't even sound like the. Hurra, hurra, hurra. I don't know what you just, to do it. I were, got like a little tickle in my throat. I said, <laughs> you just came out. Oh dear God! <laughs> it's like Hogan's dream. Thanks for dream. watching. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Cheers, guys. 